transmission control. We need to make sure that when the new course comes in, we could still maintain the quality of service. The quality of service that we provide to the other users is still good. Load control is that if suddenly a cell is heavily loaded, such that the performance degraded, then um, some sort of mechanism has to be done such that the load can be managed. One simple way, especially for third generation systems, is that because 3G is usually built over the second generation, it's usually built over GSM. If the load is very high, what they will do is they will offload some of the cores to the GSM network. So quite often, uh, you might find that if, if you're browsing on your, uh, on your mobile phone, at the beginning, you might have very good connections. You might be browsing very, very quickly, but suddenly it might be very, very slow. It's probably because the other, other users come in, and so there is a very high load for the 3G network. So your connection is the downgraded to the GSM network, which becomes very slow. Packet scheduling, uh, because nowadays the data that we send is usually in packets. If it's packets, then we could schedule the packets such that we can allow high throughputs for all the users. So these are the uh, common radio resource management schemes. For the next uh, final next few slides, I'll go through uh, the latest uh, research directions or the latest developments in wireless comms. First one is femtocells. Femtocells is uh, a cell that's very small. As I said, for cellular systems, um, every cell provides coverage to the cell sites. The, usually the, the, uh, the conventional big cells is called the macro cells. The cells that are smaller, that provides local coverage, is called micro cell. That is maybe in a city center when there are more users that they need to put a micro cell to provide extra coverage. There is also something called pico cell. Pico cell is to provide something even smaller size. Maybe in an indoor environment, uh, in a shopping mall, they might be using a pico cell. However, there is an, now an even smaller cell called femto cell. Femto cell is for um, a, a user to connect their DSL, the digital subscriber line, or their phone line, into or back to the base or to the base station or to the service provider. By doing so, if you if you buy a femto cell equipment, if you plug it into your phone line, what will happen is that it will provide additional coverage to your mobile phones. So if you are living somewhere or if you work in somewhere that you don't receive very good coverage, you buy a phantom cell, you plug it in, and you'll get very good coverage. That's what phantom cell is doing. So phantom cell is a very small cell with very low transmission power. Unlike Wi-Fi or unlike wireless LAN, it uses the license spectrum. So it won't have the spectrum problem with Wi-Fi that you might be interfering with your neighbors because uh, you're using the license spectrum that the service provider provides. It covers a very small area, uh, maybe only up to the tens or hundreds of meters, and it, as I said, it connects to the telephone line. By doing so, it provides extra coverage. There are lots of research going on, and the mobile operators are very keen on this, However, well, personally, my question would be, will it really take off? One reason is that, well, first of all, what is the motivation behind femto cells? It is because from the mobile operator's point of view, they are losing revenue. Because probably, well, you might also have, you might have a mobile phone yourself. At home, you might have internet connection. You might have a Wi-Fi connection at home. So once you go, back home, what you would do is, oh, you go online using your laptop, you connect through your Wi-Fi, and nowadays because uh, VOIP, voice over IP is so common, people might also talk over uh, the internet instead of using the mobile phone. So from a mobile operator's point of view, they are losing revenue to wireless, uh, to wireless LAN. Phantom cell will 
is trying to grab some of this uh, well, losing ground back. Because if the mobile operator can persuade users to buy FAMTO cells, plug it into uh, their home, and provide better coverage, then hopefully the mobile users will use their phones to connect uh, to the service operator. However, will it really take off? I'm not too certain because uh, to a certain extent, what the operators are doing here is that, okay, I'm not providing, I can't provide better coverage to you because you're indoor, so you, you pay to buy your own equipment. The customer have to pay for the equipment, first thing. Second thing is the customer also have to pay for the data rate that they use and also the, the minutes that they use. So to a certain extent, they are paying extra to get what they should have get. So uh, personally, and uh, some of the community in um, the communication field is quite doubtful about femto sales. Another development, of course, is the next generation systems, uh, the 3GPP LTE, the long-term evolution, or what we call the release eight. It has a much higher data rate. It uses a larger bandwidth. The bandwidth is 20 megahertz. However, the required downlink data rate is 100 megabit per second. The HSDPA, uh, the mobile broadband uh, that is used now worldwide, provides a data rate of 7.2 megabit per second. It's 7.2, but now it's 100. Yeah, so the data rate is much, much higher. And the latest test gives you uh, is 326 megabit per second, which is much, much higher even than your uh, uh, DSL, than your uh, internet connection. There are lots of enabling technologies. There are OFDMAs, single carrier FDMA, MIMO, et cetera, et cetera. There are many research being applied to uh, LTE to get better performance. And uh, they, as I've said, LTE is 3.9G. There is a 4G coming. 4G, fourth generation, the target data rate is one gigabit per second. So one gigabit per second, it is huge. And uh, one of the proposal is the LTE Advanced, also called Release 10. It's being developed at the moment, uh, and also it uses lots of latest research, such as enhanced MIMO, uh, signal relaying, and cooperative communications, as I've mentioned already.